So in buttoning this truck up, I only have one thing left to do. And that's when I switch my fuel tank from the front to the rear, it pops the fuse. So I gotta figure out where it's shorting out. I'm gonna pull the connection from the selector valve underneath on the frame, flip the switch, and if it blows the fuse, that will tell me that the short is between the switch and the selector valve in the wiring somewhere. If it does not short, that means the short is inside of the selector valve, which means I'd have to just get a new selector valve. So I'm not too sure where we left off. It's been a couple days, I had to order some parts. Yeah, popped fuse, looking for broken wires. So I've got it disconnected here. You can see that's the selector valve that's up there. I know it's kind of tough to see, but once I got this out, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. This right here is all melted. And that is not good. So I'm guessing my short is right there. And inside the selector valve, it looks the same. So I got to get this valve out uh, and we'll take a look inside of it. I actually, over here, got a whole new selector valve and a new wiring harness. So I'll put the description or I'll put the link to these in the description. So if you guys are having this issue, you can buy these. If you're wondering how to get the uh, selector valve out, I can show you here quick. Let me get this out of the bag. See these two nuts that are right there? They're kind of molded into the plastic. We'll go over here. There's two bolts, one, two, that come right out. Unfortunately, this top one is spinning, so I'm gonna have to get a wrench on the back of it. Then we'll be able to get it out. So I'm gonna get the selector valve out and uh, we'll take a look at this thing. Well, I got some good news. I got some bad news. Got the valve out. Had a little bit of an Exxon Valdez moment. Yeah, was not expecting that the fuel would come pouring out of the bottom of the valve once I got the last hose off. I shouldn't say the bottom of the valve. I should say I wasn't expecting it to come pouring out of the hose. So you might be able to see right there, I actually have hose clamps on that hose to stop the fuel from flowing. So now um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of into it. I thought I'd just be able to take this out tonight, worry about the wiring tomorrow, put it all back together tomorrow, because I gotta work in the morning, but uh, I'm kind of committed. Basically what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get the wiring all squared away. All you have to do is cut the old head, old connector off, and then we'll attach the new one. I bought these new handy dandy uh, electrical connections that are just solder with a heat gun. So I'm gonna give those a try and we're gonna put this in. So I'm gonna get to cutting. It's really tough to film under the truck. Basically, I'll get this all squared away, get it all cut, get the new plug shrink wrapped on there, everything ready to rock and roll. All right, true to my word, I had to be back when this was all installed. I was pretty happy with the way these worked. However, uh, doing them at a vertical like I did here, you know, I, I heated them just like this. Uh, it seems like the solder obviously wanted to follow gravity and go down. I think they would work better if I had the room to do it sideways, but all in all, they worked. Uh, pretty happy with them. It's easier than doing butt connectors and uh, they say they're waterproof, so I guess we'll find out. Basically what I have to do now is just uh, get the new pump back in there. Get the fuel lines hooked up. Yeah, not super excited about that. I'm gonna have to try to maybe put the new pump on that line first. I don't know. I did mark these before they got coated in diesel. But um, it looks like all the markings wore off of them. Great. Wonderful. Well, I guess I'll have to figure it out. Well, I'm going to get the uh, new valve in there right here. This is just a cheap Amazon valve. See how long it lasts. I'm going to go see if I can figure these lines out. See if there's any markings I can find because I did mark them, but when I took the diesel shower I think I might have wore the paint off. So I'll be back with you guys in a minute. So it is back up in there. You can see it It's a little dirty from having my paws all over it. Wires are tucked away for now and I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna 
have this thing out in probably two weeks because I'm actually putting an e-fuel kit in this truck, or that's my plan at least. I just ordered a Marty's e-fuel kit for this to install that. I gotta take those lines off anyway. But what I wanna do is I wanna take the truck down. I got a new fuse, pop the fuse in there. I'm gonna turn the key on. I don't have the wishbone clips in there, so I am not gonna start the truck, but I just wanna see if I'll pop the fuse. Fuel selector valve calls for a 15 amp fuse. Got a couple of them here. We'll go try it. Pull this out. That's the number six, which is this one right here. And I believe I replaced it with this one too. It'd be number 11, radio, yes. Cause I didn't know why the fuse was blowing. So when I first tried it, I pulled the radio fuse just because it was the same amperage and put that one in there. So we'll replace the radio fuse one quick. Tell you what, if this blows, if this fuse blows, after just switching that, I got bigger problems. The new 15 amp in there. Okay, just take the key, put it to the on position. Let's see if I can find the ignition. All right, we're in the on position. Whoa, let me turn the radio down. There we go, that's better. All right, now if I hit this fuel tank, let's see if it clicks and blows the fuse. I didn't hear it click. Well, I don't hear the fuse popping. Let's turn the ignition back off. Let's pull the fuse out just to see, do a visual inspection, and it might be tough for you to tell. But that fuse is not blown. So I think that solved our issue. Well, I got the fuel selector valve fuse issue figured out. I'm glad it was just that. Like I said before, I'm getting a Marty's diesel e-fuel conversion for this truck. The next video I'm going to do on this truck will be putting the Marty's e-fuel in. Um, I ordered it Friday, today's Saturday, so should be here in about a week and a half, two weeks. We'll do a whole video on how to install the e-fuel in this truck. I don't think it's too hard, but we'll find out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you guys are subscribed. You don't want to miss out on the e-fuel conversion. If you have a 7.3, if you're thinking about getting a 7.3, I'm pretty much going through this entire truck, getting it up to ship shape. I'm going to be driving this truck as it sits this summer because I want to do a bunch of shakedown with it. I don't know what it needs as far as like uh, suspension components and stuff like that. I want to get all that squared away before I paint it. So once I drive it this summer, I'll have a good idea of what it needs, what I need to do to it before all the nice paints on it. We'll paint the frame, everything. It'll be ship shape. Until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day.